And for the headlines, weather forecast, Pag-asa, rainy Tuesday expected in several areas of the Philippines. Local news, Rufus defense is Salina Bridge against demolition. CDO partners with Radisson and two other ventures. Suspected hostage taker to be charged for stabbing civilian and police officer. Philippine Vice President Duterte visits Cagayan de Oro. National News Navy seaman who lost finger in China ramming incident recounts June 17 ordeal. DOJ instructs immigration to be on the lookout for Alice Gu and 13 others. International News Fire at South Korean battery plant leaves 22 dead. Entertainment Malay Cantiferos open to taking on Ang Tanging in a role, but Rufa Gutierrez says her mom, Annabel Rama, appreciates Herbert Bautista. Sports Alex Cabagnot provides his evaluation following practice match with Gilax. Mixed martial arts fighter Bumina Ang scheduled for one championship debut in August. International feature Celebrities showcase on Paris runway for Vogue's celebration of sports and hot couture. National feature, Neo plans Manila return for champagne and roses tour. Trivia, what does the danger triangle of the face refer to? Good morning, Philippines. Magandang umaga, Luzon. Huwag may adlaw, Visayas, Huwag Mintanaw. Today is Wednesday, June 26, 2024. I am Athalia P. Saniel. Weather forecast. Pag-asa, rainy Tuesday expected in several areas of the Philippines. Despite the weakening of the southwest monsoon or habagat, Rains are anticipated across various regions of the Philippines on Tuesday, as reported by the State Weather Bureau. According to the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration, Weather Specialist Rhea Torres, in an early morning bulletin, the habagat has diminished, with prevailing easterlies or warm winds from the Pacific Ocean. Torres noted that rainfall is expected in Palawan, extensive areas of the Visayas, the eastern parts of southern Luzon, and the northeastern part of Mindanao. Local News Rufus defends a Salina bridge against demolition. In a recent public consultation meeting conducted by the Department of Public Works and Highways, Region 10, Cagayan de Oro City 2nd District Representative Rufus Rodriguez strongly opposed any plans to demolish and replace the Isalina Bridge, a significant historical landmark built in 1946 and protected under Republic Act 166. Rodriguez emphasized the bridge's cultural and historical importance to the city, proposing a comprehensive rehabilitation plan instead of demolition. His proposal includes major repairs and phased rehabilitation to ensure the bridge's safety and structural integrity, alongside stricter enforcement of load limits to prevent further damage. DPWH-10 Planning and Design Division Chief Engineer Sabeniano Caliao expressed support for Rodriguez's plan, committing to preserve the bridge's original structure through major repairs. Rodriguez's advocacy aligns with local historians and cultural advocates in Cagayan de Oro, reflecting his ongoing dedication to safeguarding the city's heritage sites and landmarks, 
As detailed in his book on the historical trail of Cagayan de Oro City, Misamis Oriental, and Camigin. CDO partners with Radisson and two other ventures. Cagayan de Oro is gearing up for significant economic growth with the impending arrival of renowned hospitality brands and retail giants. City Mayor's Office Chief and Staff Sheila Lombatan highlighted the recent partnership between Apple One and Radisson Hotel Group aimed at bringing world-class hospitality and premier residences through the development of Radisson Blue Hotel and Residences Cagayan de Oro. This initiative, supported by Mayor Rolando Clarex Uy's administration, underscores the city's appeal to prestigious businesses, with plans also in motion for Sheraton Hotel and Lander Superstore to establish their presence. These developments are expected to stimulate local businesses, create jobs, and propel the city's economic advancement, signaling a promising future as a hub for luxury hospitality and premium retail experiences. That himuon nilang kuon suspected hostage taker to be charged for stabbing civilian and police officer. A man identified as Arnold Shoko suddenly entered a residence in Zone 9 Adelpha Street, Barangay Carmen in the city, and held a woman hostage, resulting in injuries. The victim, Vilma Abranica, residing in the area, sustained wounds after being attacked by Shoko, who is of legal age and claimed to be from Baroy, Lanao del Norte. According to Lieutenant Colonel Evan Vinyas of the Cagayan de Oro City Police Office, the suspect will undergo a mental health evaluation due to suspected mental instability. Vinyas emphasized the need to assess if there are any cognitive impairments before proceeding with criminal charges against the suspect. Earlier, the victim sustained injuries to her shoulder and finger, having been attacked with a knife by the suspect, who also injured a foot of one of the police officers attempting to apprehend him late this afternoon. Philippine Vice President Duterte visits Cagayan de Oro. The COCPO has implemented a high alert status to ensure the security of Vice President Sara Duterte during her scheduled event at the USDP gym in the city yesterday morning. This measure aims to safeguard the event and prevent any compromise to the overall security of the city while the nation's second highest official is present. COCPO spokesperson Lt. Col. Evan Vinyas stated that security protocols have been coordinated between vice presidential security personnel and local police. The press will also monitor which local officials will greet and accompany Vice President Sarah, considering her recent departure from President Bongbong Marcos' cabinet as a secretary of the Department of Education citing political differences between the Dutertes and Marcoses as a reason for her forced resignation.
National News. Navy seaman who lost finger in China ramping incident recounts June 17 ordeal. A Philippine Navy seaman who lost a finger during an altercation between the Chinese Coast Guard and a resupply mission for the BRP Sierra Madre on Ayungin Shoal testified before the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations on Tuesday to recount the events of June 17. Seaman First Class Jeffrey Facundo, part of Naval Special Operations Unit, recalled their arrival at the shoal, where Chinese vessels intentionally rammed their boats without warning. Facundo described the aggressive actions of Chinese personnel, including the use of a fire axe and sharp-ended pipes, and recounted how he lost his finger during the incident. The Philippine government, through Foreign Affairs Secretary Enrique Manalo, promptly condemned the Chinese actions and emphasized the need for dialogue and diplomacy to resolve maritime disputes in accordance with international law. DOJ instructs immigration to be on the lookout for Alice Go and 13 others. The Department of Justice has issued an immigration lookout bulletin order for suspended Bamban. Tarlac Mayor Alice Go, for former Technology and Resource Center Director General Dennis Kunanan, and 12 others according to Undersecretary Margarita Gutierrez. Unlike a precautionary hold departure order issued by courts, the ILBO directs Bureau of Immigration Personnel to monitor the movements of the subjects, notify concerned agencies of any attempt to leave the country and subject them to secondary inspection if necessary. Go, Kunanan, and other respondents are facing qualified human trafficking charges following a raid on a Philippine offshore gaming operations hub in Bamban. The BI confirmed receipt and implementation of the ILBO, emphasizing the seriousness of the charges and the potential flight risk of the subjects. International News Fire at South Korean battery plant leaves 22 dead. A tragic fire at South Korean lithium battery plant claimed the lives of 22 people on Monday, mostly Chinese nationals, marking one of the country's deadliest factory incidents in recent years. Over 100 workers were present when explosions erupted on the second floor, where lithium Iron batteries were being inspected and packaged, according to firefighter Kim Jin Yong. The intense blaze led to the deaths of 20 foreign nationals, including 18 Chinese, one from Laos, and one unidentified person. The fire spread rapidly, emitting toxic fumes that quickly overwhelmed those in the vicinity. South Korean President Yoon Suk Yeol visited the site, noting concerns that safety exits were obstructed during the emergency. Investigations are ongoing to prevent future accidents at similar chemical handling facilities. Entertainment Malay and Rivera's open to taking on Ang Tanging in a role, but Comedian Melay Cantiveros expressed openness to portraying the lead role in Tanging Ina but expressed reservations during a press conference for upcoming talk show Kuan on One. Aimed at spotlighting Visaya talent. Scheduled to debut on July 2, Kuan on One will feature Bini members Colette and Aya, Kim Chu, Mai Mai Antrata, Christian Bubbles, and others. Cantiveros mentioned she would be willing to take on the role originally played by I.I. De Las Alas, but emphasized respect for De Las Alas and other senior comedians like Pokwang and Eugene Domingo. She suggested creating a new project instead, humorously suggesting Kuan Nang Ina as a potential title. De Las Alas famously portrayed Ina Montesilio in the successful Ang Tanging Ina film, series released in 2003, followed by sequels in 2008 and 2010.
Rufa Gutierrez says her mom, Annabel Brahma, appreciates Herbert Bautista. Following her disclosure of a relationship with former Quezon City Mayor Herbert Bautista, during an interview with Karen Davila, Rufa Gutierrez remains cautious about divulging further details about her new boyfriend. Despite swirling rumors about their romance earlier, Gutierrez opted to maintain silence to safeguard her privacy. As she approaches 50 this year, Gutierrez emphasized the importance of keeping personal matters private for the longevity of relationships. Their connection began during the filming of the pandemic comedy series The House Arrest of Us in 2020 and since then, they have maintained steady communication. Gutierrez mentioned enjoying her privacy and shared that her mother, Annabel Rama, has become more accepting of her independence. She also revealed that her mother appreciates the person she is currently dating. Recently, Gutierrez celebrated her 50th birthday with close family and friends, including Bautista, among other notable guests. Alex Cabagnot provides his evaluation following practice match with Gilas. Ahead of the 2024 FIBA Olympic qualifiers, Gilas Filipinas faced off not only against the Taiwan Mustangs in a send off match but also reunited with familiar faces. Coached by former PBA tactician Chris Gavina, the Mustangs featured Alex Cabagnot, Russian McCarthy, and J.O. Chu. In a competitive showdown against the Philippine squad headed for Latvia. Despite eventually falling to the team cone led Gilas, Kabagnot praised the Filipino players for their impressive performance, highlighting their strengths in shooting, penetration, and size in the front line, particularly noting the conditioning of Jun Mar Fajardo. He expressed admiration for the team's camaraderie teamwork and chemistry on the court, emphasizing the challenge of defending against their sharp shooters. Looking ahead to the qualifiers against Latvia and Georgia, Kabagnot affirmed Gila's readiness and hoped the friendly match against the Mustangs prepared them well for the upcoming challenges. Mixed martial arts fighter Bumina Ang scheduled for one championship debut in August. Carlo the Bull Bumina Ang is gearing up for the, his debut on one championship's main roster after securing a $100,000 contract. The team Laka sent out will face as a the American Ninja, 10 Pau in a three-round bantamweight MMA bout at one fight night, 24 Brooks vs. Ballard on August 3 at Lumpini Boxing Stadium in Bangkok, Thailand. Bumina Ang earned his spot with impressive performances in the One Friday Fight series, including a submission victory over Chayan Orzak. Excited about the opportunity, Bumina Ang aims to leave a lasting impression in his debut, expecting a tough challenge from Ten Pao, who transitions from Muay Thai to MMA. His coach, Mark Sang Yao, Express confidence in Bumina Ang's abilities, emphasizing his potential to deliver a striking finish in the fight. I deliver a striking finish in the fight. Bumina Ang is eager to showcase his skills to a global audience, aiming to prove that he belongs among the elite in the sport with an electrifying performance. International feature Celebrities showcase on Paris runway for Vogue's celebration of sports and hot couture. Vogue celebrated top designers in a glamorous sports themed runway spectacle in Paris on Sunday to launch Hot Couture Week and honor 100 years of French fashion. The iconic place Vendome was transformed into a catwalk adorned with nods. To various sports disciplines. Katy Perry wore a striking cutout dress by Japanese designer Noi K. Ninomiya 
while Sabrina Carpenter dazzled in a red and white swimsuit inspired creation by Jack Moose. Aya Nakamura serenaded in a Jean Paul Galter gown and FK FK and FK8 wigs exuded a 1920s charm in Alexander Vothier. Sports luminaries luminaries Sports luminaries like Serena Williams showcase an elegant off-white dress. Venus Williams this dazzled in marine sear and NBA standout Victor Wembanyama donned Louis Vuitton guided by Pharrell Williams. The show concluded with athletics legend Marie Jose Perec in an Alaya dress paying homage to the French flag. Models Kendall Jenner and Gigi Hadid rode in on horseback while luminaries such as Eva Longoria and Dior's Maria Grazia Churi watched from the front row. All amid a theme celebrating the upcoming Olympics last held in Paris a century ago. National Feature Neo plans Manila return for Champagne and Roses tour. American R&B artist Neo will make a comeback to Manila later this year as a part of his Champagne and Roses concert tour. Presented by Will Bros Live, Neo is scheduled to grace the stage on October 8th at the Araneta Coliseum at the Araneta Coliseum in Cubao, Quezon City. Fans can anticipate hearing his popular hits like Because of You, So Sick, Miss Independent, Sexy Love, Mad, and Let Me Love You, among others. Tickets for the Manila concert will be available for purchase starting at 12 p.m. on July 6. Neo's last performance in the Philippines was in January 2023 where he was joined on stage by Miss Universe 2018 Catriona Gray who performed her iconic lava walk to his song, Miss Independent. <music> Trivia What does the danger triangle of the face refer to? When considering triangle shape objects, tortilla chips, yield signs, and protectors may come to mind but your face is probably not among them. However, in terms of health, there's a critical triangle you shouldn't ignore. Known as the danger triangle of the face or the triangle of death, this area spans from the bridge of your nose to the corners of your mouth. It's advised never to pop a pimple in this region as doing so can potentially lead to a serious brain infection. Dermatologist Alok V. MD explains the significant risks associated with the danger triangle and provides guidance on how to prevent complications. And that was the information we got from here and abroad. Keep listening and watching. Please subscribe, follow, like, and share Pinoy Rob on YouTube channel. And thank you very much for watching Pinoy Rob News channel, Kagayan de Oro. I am asking once more to support and subscribe and turn on notifications for more updates and info. Big favor, give this a thumbs up to help with the algorithm. That way other people can see this and if you know anyone else that might benefit, then share this with them and please support our YouTube channel and help us get 10,000 subscribers. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.